All right, hello and welcome everybody to another Flight Sim Fan video. We're here in the AVAB by Rasbam, and I thought today we'd do a startup tutorial on how to start the plane up. So we're just here at Nellis uh, Air Force Base in one of the parking spots here. Just have a simple little loadout, two Mavericks, some rockets, and uh, two sidearms. Uh, jammer and gun. We're not going to be using any of that. We're just going to be starting up the plane. But uh, let's hop in. So this is the AVAB cockpit. Um, once the F-18 comes out, you probably will see a lot of familiarities with uh, between the planes. The batteries, the generators in the same position, uh, fuel pumps, and kind of the UFC looks kind of the same. There's one more screen in the F-18. There's two screens in here, but they kind of have the same kind of function. But um, yeah, you'll probably see some similarities. But we're going to stick to the startup, obviously, in the AVAB because that's what we have here. So what first we're going to do is head over to the right side, hit the battery to on. We're going to right-click that. The volts will come up to about 28. There it is. Generator, right click to on. And we're going to come all the way to the left here. And this is, by the way, subject to change, I should mention, because this is still the alpha build, so uh, the early access build. This might change as the uh, as the Harrier progresses in its updates. But for right now, um, it's this is the way you can start it. So battery generator, uh, fuel proportioner on, fuel pumps to norm. Let's put uh, actually some sound on here. There we go. Fuel shot off valve can come down to off. And the DECS switch to up, or the on position. We're going to come over back to the battery. The engine starter switch can be switched on. And before we do this, I'm going to close the canopy with left control C. And because it can get very loud very easily. So we'll just close the canopy here. User entered your channel. So engine start, uh, right click, you'll hear some warnings and you'll see the RPM start to rise. Warning. We'll close that and you'll see the RPM start to rise in a second here. Also, if we go outside, you'll start to see the intake fan uh, start spinning. There it goes. You can see the RPM growing. Now it's going to stop at 92. We're going to move our throttle a little bit for it to climb up. So there's uh, 9.2. Move it up. Bring it back to idle, and now the RPM, the uh, engine's going to fire up. Next, our brightness knobs, so each screen. Uh, volume can come up for each radio, and then the uh, brightness of the UFC. HUD brightness can come up as well. Day, night mode, uh, you can leave it in auto. Whatever you like. Move the stick to the side here. Let's put our... Um, I, I just call it the nav knob because that's what you use it for right now for a nav. But as soon as the INS comes into play, you probably have to put it to a line and all that stuff. So right now you just put it straight to nav. Uh, the flur can come on. The DMT stabilization can come on. Pedo heat can stay in auto. Uh, our flap power switch can come to on. Right click for on. And you use your flaps accordingly. So we're gonna I'm gonna plan for a short field takeoff. So the flaps go to stall mode. A short takeoff landing. Land lights can be as required. RPS yaw to on. Yaw roll. Get the nozzle out of the way. Roll and pitch can come on. Come back here. Formation lights can be on. Position and anti collision. Now, no external lights will work unless you have this switch here in the normal position, which is forward. And uh, emergency jettison switch can be armed. And you're pretty much good to go. Water as required as well. If it's a hot day, or if you're doing a if you're doing vertical takeoff, you want it in takeoff mode. If you're doing a short field takeoff, you don't really need it too much. Just watch your RPM. And uh, that's pretty much it. We can have a little look around the cockpit for the rest of the stuff here, though. Your H2O levels here, so that's in pounds. You got 500 pounds of water. Your JPT, that's your temperature. Uh, I forget what it stands for, but it's your temperature, your ex exhaust temperature kind of thing. There's a real ac that's it's, ac it's an acronym, obviously. RPM of the engine 28. It's idles at 0. Uh, or 28 percent, 28.6. We got fuel flow here. This is your nozzle degrees, so it tells you how much your nozzles go down. I've never seen it go past 100 or 99 slash 100. I don't know why there's 120 there, but um, this is also replicated on your HUD here. So nozzle. So I bring the nozzles down. You see that gauge move. And you'll see the uh, nozzle position move here too. Flaps go with the nozzles as well. So since we're in VSTAL mode, when the nozzles are zero, the flaps are 25. As I start to move them down, you'll see the flap gradually increase by itself. You'll see that outside as well. So that's how they look outside. You have a heading at the top. 
altitude to the top right, speed on the left, uh, your ladder here for uh, climbing, descending, velocity vector. You have feet per minute. This is obviously zero because we're not climbing or descending. Uh, weight point, uh, and it'll display which weight point at how far you are from it. You have your AOA. I have no idea what this is. You have your <laughs> you have your uh, RPM, and then you have your temperature JVT, which is just replicated there, and RPM is replicated there. Moving down, you also got the normal gauges, the uh, artificial horizon. You got the vertical speed, the altitude, the airspeed, and AOA indicator. That's all on the HUD as well. And that's pretty much the whole plane. I probably got some things wrong, but that's the way I started up. Uh, HUD controls can be found here as well. Nav mode, V-stall, air to ground. Um, but yeah, that's the startup of the plane. Uh, last thing to do, parking brake off, which I had map on a button, by the way. I have it on a little switch. You see it moving back there. You want it in the off, in the, uh, off position. Brakes off. And nozzle could be either zero or f I think they I heard they taxi with 50 or something like that, but uh, just increase the rod a little bit, and you're good to go. Nice little thing I want to mention as well. I didn't touch the anti skid. I leave it in NWS mode, which is nose wheel steering. The reason that if I I turn the anti skid to on, this goes to cast, and now I have to hold my nose wheel steering button to turn. If I turn it back to nose wheel steering. It's automatically nose to steering. I don't have to hold anything. Plus, if I do hold my button, it goes nose to steering high mode, so you can take a nice tight turn on the carrier, anything like that. Don't go too fast. You will flub over very, very quickly. I can kind of demonstrate that for you right here. So this is without nose to steering high. The turn, right? I'll go straight. That's full. That's full left rudder. Nose to steering high, and I can make a tighter turn like that. So I'll, I'll let go. This is what it does. With it on, you make tighter turns basically. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial here. If you did like it, please leave the like. Please subscribe. If you didn't like it, I guess dislike it because <laughs> you're only other option. Uh, leave a comment as well What everything I missed, which is probably a lot. And as I said, this is all subject to change as the Harrier gets updated. But for right now, in the current 2.2 build of uh, Nevada and the open beta, uh, this is the fastest and easiest way to start up the plane. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.